Hi, this is a uh, photograph that I shot recently of an Olympic swimmer. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about how it was created, uh, the depth, the tonality, the, uh, uh, the contrast in it, and how you can see all of his muscles. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of go through and, and discuss how I created the image. Um, let me uh, bring up the, the original. I just have a layer on top here. It's the original image. This is the original image uh, straight from the raw file out of the camera. I imported this, uh, which is it's also in the bottom layer. So I just copied the bottom layer and put it on top so it would be easier to toggle back and forth between the final image, which is that, and the straight from the camera. Uh, one of the things that I tend to uh, like to do is... Uh, start with the basic uh, like a three light setup uh, like having some rim light and some some light on either side in this case because of the uh, the limitation of me being in the pool we didn't quite do it that way uh, which gave me a little bit more Photoshop work but as you can see uh, let me use this I don't know if you can see that pointer let me let me get a, uh, a bigger Anyway, uh, having trouble being able to point. Okay, there we go. You should be able to see this. As you see the shadow detail in here in the original, uh, I didn't really create anything where it didn't originally exist, but I amplified that, uh, that texture. And I want to show you the original photo, uh, which actually here's a, a photo. It's actually posted on Facebook. Uh, uh, of course, that's me. And up there is, it's a different swimmer, but it was from the same session with the same strip light. Um, so I took this setting. Now up here you'll see, whoops, you'll see uh, this line across here, which is actually, um, they were using a mister, actually a sprinkler, and they were spraying the water down to cool it. There was a triathlon there the next day. and. Uh, I, t I saw that and, and used it to, to my best advantage there with that mist behind him. And the red, white, and blue is, is just, you know, those are the, uh, the U of A colors, so uh, that worked out really well. Okay, so let me go ahead and undo all of these layers, and we'll start talking about a few of them, and I can explain pretty much how, how the image came together. Uh, one of the things that I do... Uh, for right off the bat with these images, if we if we zoom in here, uh, you'll be able to see as I toggle that, I use a healing brush and I just remove some of the moles and other blemishes on the skin. Not everything, not all of them, but some of the ones that just kind of stand out uh, to start with. So that's one thing that I do. Um, the next thing that I do in an image like this is I create a high contrast mask. Uh, almost like uh, the old Dave Hill effect and uh, the, the way I do that is I I create a, uh, a second layer um, actually I need to do that differently sorry about that I need to select all control J so I create a layer that that isn't tied to the original raw image uh, so what I do with that one is I hit Control I and I invert it so that it is uh, a negative. I change the the layer mode to vivid light, and what you basically get is a gray area with a little bit of contrast. Uh, so I then turn to my filters. I do a blur which uh, a more accurate way to do it is a surface blur. A quicker way, um, which I'm going to do here, is Gaussian. And if you can see here, we get, we're starting to get some of that detail. And the more we turn up the detail, the more, I mean, the more we turn up the radius, the more detail we get. So we want something that looks a little bit like this. This is actually probably a little bit much. We're going to back it off to like four and a half, a little over. Now, if you've played with uh, your custom filters, other high pass, this looks a lot like a high pass filter and it does basically the same thing, it's just a slightly different way to create it. So 
So now what we do is we just take that result and create a new layer with it because we're going to use that as a filter layer. And then we just hide the, uh, the temporary layer that we made. And then we come here and we go to an overlay mode. And what we've done there is we've really kind of pumped up the image and sharpened it as well as brought the highlights up. Uh, that's a pretty quick way and a lot of people will, will do that and pretty much stop there. See it's not quite as sharp, the highlights aren't as bright. We turn that layer back on, we get brighter highlights, sharper image, and it does look pretty pretty darn cool. Uh, so we, we go ahead and we do that and then what I really like to do is I like to darken my shadows and, and uh, brighten my, my highlights but I don't want to do it with with an action or, or with you know do it photo wide because I want to create some effect on there and I want to be able to, to go in there by hand and, and update it so what I do is uh, I create a darken layer and if we if I show you what we do is it's just a curves layer and I adjust the curves now depending on the image I go in here and by hand I, I adjust how much lighter or darker I want it to be. But I just make a darken layer like that and then I'll use the layer mask. I'll make the whole thing black. In fact, let's just go ahead and I'll create another layer just like it. And I will make the whole background, the whole masking black which means that, that nothing shines through. And then I just grab a brush here and use white as my color. Uh, let's just go through, and when I see something dark that I want to uh, that I want to darken, oops, that's a little much. I'm gonna soften that, and we definitely want size and sh uh, opacity to be linked to the pressure on my pen, and we just start painting it in. And as you can see, the, it's very subtle to start with. And we're going to do that in multiple layers. One of the cool things about this is you can, you can go through and you can erase and feather it. Uh, so I just go ahead and do that. And as, as I work on that, you'll, uh, you know, or as you work on it, you'll, you'll see that you can get something more, more to, uh, to this effect. Again, let's go take it off and add it on. As you can see, it took some time to go through there and really kind of darken what we want to. Um, you know, we look at the, the goggles and we see how we're, we're taking that gray and making it black. So we, And we do this in multiple layers. Um, we don't, I don't want to do it all at once in one layer because as, as, we, as we blend it, we can, we can have more creative control and uh, need to be a little bit less uh, or we don't need to be as as good with the pen uh, so we just go through and we can copy a layer and add it erase parts of it out now we, I do the same thing with the lighten layers uh, let's uh, take a look at this one now see here's one that I, I actually made a bunch lighter I didn't you know the the, the uh, darken layer was just a little bit down uh, this was a lot for those for those real big highlights uh, or the real bright highlights. Let's see this one here. Oh, same way. So uh, so what you're doing is you're just basically using your pen and filling in, you know, allowing the uh, the altered layer, the uh, the adjustment layer to uh, to apply to more of the image as you paint white and then you just go back and paint black and there's no no erasing no no uh, uh, damaging your original image it's easy to go back and forth uh, then I had to uh, work with the hue and saturation layers and all I really had to do here was I think I took the cyans and I really pumped up the saturation and I pulled the hue a little bit more blue and blue I just bumped up the saturation a bit so what we did there, it's pretty pretty easy to see. The pool was a little bit green in the, in the photo, and I just wanted to get rid of that. Um, now here 
is a black and white layer, but what I'm really just doing is darkening the cyans a bit and pulling that down. I didn't really make the image black and white. Um, so again, just kind of darken out those cyans. Uh, here, I did the same thing that I did down here and went through those steps and showed you with the, uh, the uh, inverted layer. Um, again, I got to this level of the image and I wanted a little more contrast, a little bit uh, harsher reality. So I went through and did that. Uh, continued on through. I decreased the saturation of the overall image. And uh, here I adjusted the color balance to bring it back to white. Now, um, one of the things that I should point out is that if you go to image mode, 16 bits a channel. If you tried to do this with an 8-bit image, you would end up with a complete mess. There's just not enough detail in an 8-bit image to uh, to modify the image this much and still have have the original colors and, and the uh, bit detail. So you want to make sure you're on a 16-bit image. Uh, let's see what else. Again, we just did another adjustment curves and we could see what we're doing there is darkening the uh, the dark areas and just brightening it up a little bit in the middle or a little above the middle. Uh, again, curves, we kind of darken, darken his face and his shoulders out a little bit. They got a little bit hot. Um, here's a hue saturation layer where we actually pump the saturation back up in certain areas. And photo filter. We added a deep blue filter uh, to really kind of increase the blues in the whole thing and, and make it feel uh, like a pool image. And then I just went through and as, if you can see, let me just hit this backslash, you can see I just feathered away uh, a lot of the areas uh, where his, where the water needed to be very white and where his, where his skin was. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all that uh, that uh, the image took to uh, to make it what it is. Um, here's one thing that I did um, that just actually increased it a little bit. It's not uh, not the final image. I didn't use this in the final image, but um, what I did is I basically made a black and white copy of the image, uh, which you could do with Control Alt Shift D. Uh, to be on the layer. And then uh, when it's finished there, you hit Control U for hue saturation and you just drop the saturation down. So you have a black and white copy of the image, and then if you change it to a luminosity, actually no an overlay, luminosity would just make it stay the same as it was overlay you end up with a whole lot more contrast and then all you need to do is use the opacity and you just crank it to where you think it looks good uh, so that's a way to increase the overall contrast in the image darken it a little bit and uh, give it a bit of a grungier feel while staying sharp so again hopefully um, you got something out of this I know I kind of bounced around a little bit but I think there were some good tidbits in there Again, uh, the original image and a final version of it. All right, well, thank you very much. And don't forget to, uh, to check out my website, darrenshade.com. That's D-A-R-O-N-S-H-A-D-E.com. And check me out on Facebook and uh, Google Plus if you're on there. All right, thank you very much.